Hello, I'm Dale Kislik. Welcome to the third video in our snow shelter series. This video is all about building what I call the box trench snow shelter. Taking a little glance inside the finished product, looking up right into the, the belly of the snow trench. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. Here we're looking at the first video, the Morris Kohansky Igloo, and there it is at night. And here's a glimpse at the second video in the series, the A-Frame Snow Trench and how to build that. Check out those videos on our channel. Okay, let's get focused on the box trench shelter. Here's a photo of me quite a few years ago, almost 20 years ago now. And let's take a look at the steps that I used to build this particular one, starting with this photo right here. Here's a quick review on how to get snow blocks. This is the method I use most because it's often hard to find deep enough, hard enough wind blowing drifts to simply walk up to and cut blocks from. So first I would find an area as you see in this photo here. In this case, I've marked it as a big rectangle that's going to be the sleeping platform for the box trench shelter. The next step is to take the snow shoes and hammer down the snow, uh, pack it down really good, give it a good stamp, and crush the snow crystals down. I don't just walk on it, I stamp on it and really consolidate the ice crystals uh, together. Let it set up for three hours, sometimes longer. You may get away with it quicker depending on the outside temperature and snow conditions. When that's done, you can then begin cutting snow blocks as we see in this video right here. So we're looking at one of the guys in the Karamat course cutting a snow block. There's a lot of different saws and various devices that you can use to cut uh, snow blocks. You can discover that on your own. And you can see we're shaving a block here. It's 18 to 20 inches wide, 5 inches thick, and about 12 inches high. And just trimming it up nice and neat. We're looking at a photo where I've cut a few blocks out of the area in the front. That front area will become the entrance. I've laid those blocks on their edge as high as possible along the side of what's going to become the sleeping platform. You can see the gloves in the picture there. That's going to be the sleeping platform. Now we're looking at a photo where there's a lot more blocks all the way down the side. It's starting to resemble a coffin with a bit of a hole in the front where the glove in the lower step in the front is and the platform further up in the shelter as you can see. Uh, at that point then it's time to throw in a mattress before you put the roof on is the best time to add a mattress in. In this case I was beside a lake so I uh, was it was very easy to grab cattails. I've used cattails, I've used Phragmite reeds, I've used grass and I've used uh, all the conifer boughs for bedding material and a mixture of both. Once the bed is done then it's time to start putting on top some uh, small wrist thick roughly uh, sticks to create the roof. Now you don't have to do this. You could just keep cutting large blocks and make the ceiling entirely out of snow blocks. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but I just thought I would go a little bit further and, and make this into kind of a deluxe model. And this is the method that I've chosen. I have done it as well just with snow blocks. But this way uh, I find using the sticks and as you'll see the mylar blanket um, when you roll around inside there, it tends to prevent uh, knocking snow down onto you when you're laying in the, the snow trench shelter. So here's a mylar blanket laid down on top of the sticks. That's pretty straightforward. Now you can see I've started to put some snow on top of it and just covering it up, starting at the back and working towards the front. We're going to take another look here from a different angle and it shows how I was able to keep the mylar blanket in place by just kind of uh, piling snow along the edges 
to hold it in place and then throwing snow on the top. Otherwise, if you, if you start too quickly and throw snow on the top, it tends to cause the blanket to sag under the weight of the snow in between the sticks that I've put across. And we came down the front. Uh, there's my son just sitting beside there. Uh, what this picture is, is showing and what I'm trying to convey here is the entranceway. So it steps down to the entranceway. It's important to build a proper cold sink. You need the entranceway to be lower than the actual platform inside the shelter. Uh, 10 to 30 centimeters or 6 or 8 inches or even 10 inches below the, entrance, the top of the entranceway to get an ideal cold sink. And here is a picture of me laying, I am laying on the, the sleeping platform and taking a picture of my son as he sits in the entranceway. And uh, that gives you a good idea of how the cold sink operates so that the uh, entranceway to the shelter is lower than the platform. Let's take a look inside the shelter. So this is the completed shelter I'm laying up in the bed. And you can see it's not all that big. This is an emergency shelter. It's not something you'd live in. It's something that you would build with intention of staying in for a night or two or three. And it's just meant for the purpose of sleep. You don't have a fire. You have clothing that is going to allow you to sleep in temperatures around freezing because you can't have a fire inside the shelter, of course, or heat inside the shelter, but your body becomes the heat source or a good sleeping bag. And then you don't have to worry about a uh, insufficiency in your in your uh, sleeping bag or maintaining a fire through the night. You just crawl in and sleep. I've added this slide to the video because it shows the results of a night spent in this particular snow shelter. I'll just read it out loud there. It says test results with one candle burning. So I had a candle burning inside which raises the temperature inside. Uh, the temperature at the sleeping platform was plus two degrees Celsius. The temperature near the floor, which is where my son is kneeling, uh, is minus two. So that's down in the cold sink. The outside temperature was minus 26. This is proof for the insulating abilities of snow shelters. The outside temperature was bitter cold, yet inside it was quite warm around freezing which emphasizes the point that in snow shelters you still require clothing or a sleeping bag that will keep you comfortable around freezing. At this point I am going to take a step to the side and demonstrate another way to build a box trench shelter without the use of cutting snow blocks. So it is possible to not have to compact and cut snow blocks using this method I'm showing here. To start with, I used a shovel and threw up some snow and I packed down a platform just with my feet and patted it down with the shovel and basically created that sleeping platform in a good solid structural way so that uh, it would I wouldn't sink into it. I made sure and packed that sleeping platform ahead of time nicely. Then the next step was to take the shovel and just heap up a huge pile of snow. This is how you would build a Quincy um, or dig a snow fort for your kids. You basically toss the snow up high into as high a pile as you can. Throwing snow up into the air and letting it roll and slide down crushes the ice crystals and makes it so that the ice crystal crystals will set up and become solid. And again, you let this pile sit for uh, a few hours, two or three hours or more, and that pile will firm up uh, hard enough so that you can crawl up on top of it without collapsing it. Then the next step after it's consolidated and sat for a while, instead of cutting blocks, I'm just going to take my shovel, which happens to be just wide enough for a sleeping platform and an entranceway, and begin carving my way into it. And as you see, I've started to carve the entranceway with the shovel. As I shoveled my way into the pile, I've discovered that I could feel the platform that I had packed previously as step number one for this type of shelter. Uh, it gets hard. The, the snow is harder where that platform was packed and I could definitely feel it. So I just stopped digging into it at that point 
and look for for the top of the platform and then just take out the less compacted snow uh, with the shovel and leave the platform behind and at that point then I put in Phragmite reeds in this case which were nearby this shelter location and then I topped up the Phragmite reeds as well with some spruce boughs that I happen to have for a nice comfy bed after that it's a simple matter of uh, at least in this case using the sticks again to create the roof and then the step down to the entranceway and uh, you can see that there and then put on the mylar blankets it takes two usually to uh, cover a shelter like this uh, now I'm going to move into some video that will show us uh, building uh, a box trenched shelter at the Karamat course in 2018 with a bunch of people so you'll see this technique I just described in action here Yeah, exactly. So could we have not used wood or my, and mylar and just done snow blocks? Absolutely. But this is us experimenting with a different way to do it. And this of course is only usable if you have wood and you have mylar. If you're in a strictly snow situation, you wouldn't have those things anyway. Yep. <laughs> Looks like I need one more mylar blanket or we finish it with blocks. Let's just finish it with blocks. Okay. We've got sturdy enough blocks, I think, to bridge that span. Anybody go inside yet? And actually try to get up on that bed? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Boy, we got a roomy alcove, eh? We could have closed that door down even lower, but we'll leave it this big so we can get anybody who's a bit on the larger side in there. And then you can just drape something over the front, right? Somebody in there? No, not at the moment. Test. <laughs> Are you going in? If you have any questions about this video or any other videos on our channel, I encourage you to leave a comment or drop us a line. I do respond to each and every comment we get and I enjoy conversations with all of our viewers. The next video in this snow shelter series is the Quincy Shelter. Please subscribe to receive notifications on this video and all of our upcoming videos. Don't forget to check out our website www.naturealiveadventures.com and also have a look at Karamat Wilderness Ways website. I will be a guest instructor at their upcoming winter and summer courses along with a few other great instructors. You can find them at karamat.com. Take care and thanks for watching.